Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of South by Southeast. Today we are with Chris of Veterans Own Woodworks. So thank you Chris for being here today. Thanks for having us. It's wonderful to have you. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself and what kind of woodwork you do. So uh, so we own Veterans Own Works. Um, it's a business that is owned by veterans, my wife and myself. Um, I'm currently active duty okay. uh, in the Army side and then my wife served four years in the Army. Oh, wonderful. Um, for our, our business, we are a custom furniture and home decor. Oh, nice. Product. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so we like to really uh, focus on like the customizing of home decor items like the tray or adding names to cutting boards and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But we also like to really focus on customizing um, certain pieces of furniture for certain clientele. Okay. And also like our biggest thing right now is our business started with poker tables. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so we have a poker table that we're currently working on that we'll have to deliver at the end of the month. So it's a, it's a good thing to like have a variety of things. Mm. Um, so when we don't have orders for furniture, we, can, we have something else to lean against. Yeah. And then even when orders or when home decor orders are kind of slowing down, we have that, you know, that one order of furniture that would kind of pick up sales for the oh, month. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, but yeah. Um, so I'm originally from Chicago. Uh, okay. I've been here all my life and said when I moved out from the military, uh, my wife and I, we've been married um, eight years in February. So I'm glad you remember because I probably <laughs> would remember by, by my husband's. Good. But good so, for you. <laughs> so we, uh, we actually met in the Army. Uh, we met at our job training. We were dating for about a year and a half, two years before we did decided to go uh, get married. Oh, okay. Um, we had a long distance relationship. You know, she was stationed in uh, El Paso, Texas, and I was, you know, a reservist here in Chicago. Okay. And so I was kind of doing the part-time Army deal while she was full-blown Army. <laughs> um, and then when we decided to get married in 2015, you know, I took the leap of leaving my home oh, and gosh. going to uh, El Paso, uh -huh. and then I had transfer units, and... Um, the rest is history. You know, we've been all over the country. We were, uh, I was stationed in Fort Knox after our assignment when she got out. Uh -huh. And then um, we moved to Arizona because I had gotten accepted into a, a special program that fully activated me the whole time, which oh, is wow. the current program that I'm at now. And so we were in Arizona in Tucson for about four years. Okay. And so, and then in about uh, August of 2020, is when we got the opportunity to move back to Chicago. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I wanted to go to Texas. She's from Texas. She didn't want to go to Texas. <laughs> so she's from the Dallas area, and I really wanted to go to this uh, this special unit that was in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Fortunate enough, they have one of those special units here. Oh, nice. It's, in, it's only the only two locations that they have this type of unit. So I wanted to go there, and she's like, no. I was like, okay, cool. So she's like, All right. and I was like, but you want to be my family? And she's like, yes, but I want to be by your family. <laughs> and so, uh, so I was like, okay, so we got picked up, um, for Chicago. So we came to this area and, um, you know, when we moved to Chicago, I really wanted a poker table. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of where like the formation of our business started. Okay. And so like when we came to Chicago, I wanted a poker table. Uh, the price tag wasn't pretty. It was like four or five figures. Oh my god. Yeah, and then uh trying to get that wife approved, it wasn't it was it wasn't. Like, I could buy half of it now. <laughs> half of it later. Right. I'll play with a half a table. Like, no. And so um so right then and there, um me being a mechanic in the army, she challenged me. She's like, why don't you just build your own table? And I was like, hmm. <laughs> challenge accepted. Well, at first, the funny part is, is at first, I didn't even take the challenge. And I was like, nah, that's dumb. I'm not going to. Why would I build one? Today? That seems hard. So and then I right there. I can right, just buy right now. Right? I was like, how about this one? This one's like 5000 She's like, no, 2000 No. And then it got to the point where she was like looking at like... um these like table topper covers mm. that were mm -hmm. like 50 bucks to 200 bucks. I'm like, no, I don't want that. I want to, you know, go all out. You know, I want to host a game, oh you know, have food, drinks, and uh -huh. have the TV going, and have everybody go like a really nice time. Uh -huh. And then it was like, she was like, it's either this or nothing. And I was like, how much do I have as a budget for the table? And she gave me a budget and I used every single penny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so, um, we don't have it on our Instagram, uh -huh. but it's posted in the uh, portfolio of our, oh, okay. of our website. So it's a red table. I call it the boss or midnight poker because uh -huh. it's a red table because red is my favorite color. Okay. And uh, 
But yeah, I made it exactly how I wanted. I wanted the dealer seat trays. It has a horse track where people can put their chips. And then there's a oh, designated okay. playing field, kind of like a betting line. And so, like, it was awesome. You know, um, after I built it, it took me about, I would say, four months. Oh, wow. That's and that was, like, working, good time. working on it part-time. That was, like... A couple hours a week during mm -hmm. the week, maybe like a four or six hours on a weekend, maybe on a Saturday, mm -hmm. and then I had training, and then by the time I came back, I finished it all. Mm -hmm. And so from there, um, I started hosting games. I was hosting games in my house, in our basement, um, for about five months before the kind of the game kind of died. Mm -hmm. um, but throughout that time, I had a lot of people interested in the poker team. Okay. So they're like, oh, Chris, like, you got a nice oh, spot. Oh, we see what you could do. Yeah, because I had, like, the whole basement set up. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a half basement, but it's like there was, a, the, there was like living room a living room area there. Mm -hmm. There was the big screen TV. Mm -hmm. There was my PlayStation. We had the cable down there. The Wi-Fi router was down there, so nobody had any, you know, connectivity issues. Mm -hmm. You know, I had bought, like, top-of-the-line chips. You know, everything was decked out. The dealer area was fully situated, uh -huh. so even the dealer wouldn't have any problems. Nice. And so, like, everybody was like, oh, Chris, you know, you got a nice spot. You know, where did you get this poker table? And it's like, <laughs> I built it. <laughs> wow. Well, an and the, they wouldn't one. believe me. They're like, no, no, you didn't. <laughs> I did. Like, for real. Like, uh -huh. Legit, I built this table. And they're like, oh, for real? And I, some people were like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, yeah, there's a defect there. There's a defect there. <laughs> You're just pointing them out everywhere. Yeah, and then some people were like, oh, you really did build it. <laughs> And they then, just didn't want to admit it. No, they didn't. And so, <laughs> like, I, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, the people who were, like, when I showed them the defects, they are like, okay, this this table is garbage. But, like, the other people, when they actually believed me, like, like, oh, damn, you really built this table. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And they are like, this is a sick-ass fucking table. <laughs> and I was like, well, thank you. You know, come next week. <laughs> we're going to have our game on Saturday, just you know. Coming. And so, because we would take rank. So, you know, it was an opportunity for me and my... You know, my partner at the time, I, um, I had a guy come in so he can help me bring in people. Mm -hmm. And then we would just split the rig. And so, um, so the game died. Um, we stopped hosting games. You know, my partner left. I mean, I still f associate with him. Mm -hmm. But uh, him and I, we don't really have a relationship anymore. And so at that time, it was, um, I wanted to get rid of the table. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I, I've had it almost for a year mm -hmm. at this point because once our game broke, from the creation of it to when we had the game, and then once the game broke, to the point where we want to sell, it was like a little over a year. Okay. And so, I know that may sound like a little bit impulsive, but it was like more closer to like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. A year and a quarter. And my wife, she's like, what are we going to do with this table? You know, it's just, <laughs> just sitting here. Room. <laughs> it is, 100%. Because I'm telling you, this is a half basement. It's mm -hmm. not a full basement. It's a half basement. And so, we have an eight foot by four foot table mm -hmm. sitting here without a top. So oh it's gosh. like if you put anything on it, you're you're putting stuff on the playing field. Mm -hmm. And she like she knew how nice it was. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, oh no, don't don't let the kids play on it. Well, my nieces and nephews would come on it. You know, they would dirty it, and then we'd have to clean it even though we hadn't used it in a couple yeah. of weeks. <laughs> and so um, from there, we you know we posted it online. We were asking for seventeen hundred, mm -hmm. which is a reasonable price mm -hmm. when you compare like other custom tables like from big box places you know mm -hmm. and i was you know i was willing to ship it or i was willing to deliver it okay. within like a 100 mile radius and so uh we had it on facebook marketplace for about three weeks i think it was about three weeks then we had our first customer oh wow yes so this was like before we had filed our motion for our llc and mm -hmm. registered with the state and so he reached out to us he's like hey i like a poker table he's like but i don't want it can you make me one? Oh, wow. And I there was like, go. hmm, this was interesting. So mm -hmm. this is like February of last year. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, it's more towards the end of January. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's fine. You know, if you want to come check out the table, you can come by the house. We still have it in the garage before we switched into a shop. Mm. <laughs> and so this is when we still had the two-car garage. Uh -huh. So it's just sitting in there. So he comes like two weeks later and he comes by. And he likes the table. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, you know, you do really nice work. And he's like, you know, I'm looking for something that's brown. You know, instead of this color, maybe you do like a beige for the mm -hmm. playing field. I just want something simple. So we talked, you know, we right then and there, he was like, you know, how much can you do it for? And I told him at the time, you know, where our poker tables are at 1250. That's mm -hmm. how much they start. You know, that includes labor, 
material and then obviously our markup. Right. Um, but I also told them, I was like, hey, you know, that includes free delivery. You know, we will deliver to you, hands hassle-free. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll load it into your house. That's it. And then at that point, that's when somebody else had hit us up mm -hmm. about doing another poker table for them. Oh, wow. And then that, at that point, like, it was just kind of like an all, like, a, a good, perfect timing. Mm -hmm. And so when it was getting to that point where it just seemed like a really good, like, manifestation of time to, like, hey, suggest to the wife, we, let's start a business. And mm -hmm. we, her and I have always wanted to start a business. And so this was just like just a perfect opportunity. Right, yeah. And so like I pitched the idea to her and you know the first question out of every wife's mouth is how are we going to pay for it and <laughs> what the hell are we going to do? Of and course. So, and I told her, I was like, we're going to do custom furniture. You know, we'll start over poker tables and then we'll go into desks, you mm -hmm. know, so other type of furniture, you know, do ottomans, coffee tables, side tables, stuff like that, you know. Okay, so Chris, tell me about what we have on the table here today because I, these are some really beautiful pieces of woodwork. Um, I'm assuming that these are like cutting boards. Yes. I don't want to assume too much, but tell me a little bit about what you brought today. So when we merged into the whole home decor section, mm -hmm. um, stepping away from the custom furniture because we mm -hmm. weren't getting any sales, we started with the, the coasters. Okay. So obviously some of our first time buyers, our first initial clients were, are going to be our family members, uh, our close friends and stuff like that. Um, it was a good experiment. Uh, mm -hmm. These are still one of our best sellers. Oh yeah. And then we—that's when we started migrating over to the other items. Mm -hmm. The next item were actually the cutting boards. Okay. And so when we did our research, you know, we decided to do an, it, what is called an edge grain cutting board. Mm -hmm. And so an edge grain cutting board is basically when you get a piece of wood, something like this. Okay. Um, kind of see this face surface. Mm -hmm. This is called the face grain, and you slice the piece of wood like this, and then you what happens is you rotate it ninety degrees, mm -hmm. and then you'll see this right here. This is the edge portion of the roof. Okay. And then, so, from there we'll glue them all together, kind of laminating with uh, um, food, safe, food safe glue. Yeah, and, oh, uh, that's always good, because yeah. you don't want <laughs> anything coming up on the food that you're cutting on here. Yeah, and then, so from there we glue them, and then it provides additional strength for the cutting board. Okay. Obviously, the, the best type of cutting board is an end grain, which is this real dark part of the wood. Imagine straw standing up. Mm -hmm. That's pre pretty much how like wood fibers work. Mm -hmm. This is the toughest part of the wood. Okay. So we eventually like to get into end grain cutting boards, but definitely didn't want to start with the face grain cutting boards. Right. And so we don't have them out here today, but after the cutting boards, we moved into charcuterie boards. The charcuterie oh, boards okay. are face grain. You know, they're one probably one of our easiest items to make, mm -hmm. uh, which is why they we make them relatively more affordable than the cutting boards. Gotcha. And so. Um, from there, uh, we went into kind of a mix of incorporating our CNC machine a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, we got a CNC in July, so we started our business in in March. We started our business in March, <laughs> and we got our CNC by July. And so this is where we started manifesting towards that way, gotcha. where instead of doing things by hand mm -hmm. we can do things automated and have less margin for error so we can right. our qa qc can be a lot tighter right and so, so if somebody wants to order something like a cutting board or charcuterie board or even any of your personalized coasters where can they find you in order for them to put in those orders so we're really active on instagram okay so if they look at veterans own ww or w veterans own woodworks on Instagram, they'll find us, we'll be the first ones. And then if you guys go to our website at www.veteransownww.com, mm -hmm. um, they can find us there. Okay. Um, we have a Facebook page, uh -huh. not many people are on it. Really? But if the people for who are on Facebook, you know, <laughs> feel free to give us follows there. Of course. And so uh, if they're on our Facebook page or Instagram, there's always a link to our website. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually have a digital business card. Okay. So like, if they can scan our QR code, you know. Put you right there. Yeah, put you right there. <laughs> Everything you need is right there. And, and so how long would something like the board or the coasters or like the engraving take for you to make? So the, the cutting boards are a multi-day process. Okay. And so if we have the wood on hand, it just depends on what kind of style they're doing. If they're doing an all wooden style or if they're doing an accent piece. Mm -hmm. The accent piece takes about um, a little bit longer, like a day or so, because okay. it's multiple glue ups and then making sure that all the pieces are correct. Gotcha. Uh, but an average cutting board of this size is a 14 by 10 by one and a half. It takes about three days to make. And okay. That's um, milling the wood, cutting the wood, gluing it together, 
remilling the wood and then cutting it to size. Mm. Okay, and okay. then something like this, uh, the CNC has been a great benefit to us. Um, something like this would take about five minutes to do the bowl cut mm -hmm. and then depending on the intricate amount of detail on the scene of uh, the carving for mm -hmm. the logo um this logo specifically took about five minutes oh okay and then the cutout and then from there we'll do a round over we use tongue oil as our main base it's another food grade uh, oh, oil good. Good. and so all of our stuff it's all natural it's all hardwood and it's all coated with tongue oil okay. um tongue oil is kind of underrated Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people use more of a mineral oil beeswax combination because it's relatively cheap, but it doesn't provide that layer of protection, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, if you look at over there in that tin is actually we make our own board butter. Oh, okay. And so uh, people say what board butter is and in the words of my wife, it's kind of a cutting board lotion. <laughs> and so it, it provides that protection. Uh -huh. and so, um you know, we sell that too. Um, funny enough, for every cutting board that someone buys, they get a free can of that. Oh, that's perfect. That's yeah. a good thing to know so that everybody who is out there who wants to make an order, mm -hmm. that'll come with your board. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so, and then kind of the last thing we added to our lineup was these bottle openers. Mm -hmm. We are trying to, at this point, we were right coming up to our first show the mm. show we met you guys at yes and we were trying to figure out of other items that we can sell mm -hmm. you know 25 dollars for a tray you know 35 dollars for coasters 125 dollars for a cutting board there's not um there's not tiers to fit everybody right, and right so you know when i talk to Haley, like hey what's another item we can bring out that's relatively affordable mm -hmm. um bottle can openers <laughs> and so um so when we came up with this design uh, I actually borrowed it from another woodworker who said I can borrow it. Mm -hmm. um, these were just hotcakes. Yeah. You know, we have a, it's called like a puck design. I was going to say, it looks like a little hockey, a hockey puck. Yeah, it does. And so, you know, we have the openings, we have two bot openers, and then we have the engraving of our logo in the back. Mm. And so I can tell you, minus the first event out of the six craft events we did this winter, bot openers were bot always openers. the number one sale. And Especially around Christmas. Oh, yeah. Um... <laughs> My brother-in-law was the first person to buy entities. <laughs> he was like, hey, you know, let me I'll get some. Them. You know, how many and you that's want? what you got for Christmas? I didn't get that. My my father-in-law <laughs> did, and all the other people did. I didn't get them. They're that back in Dallas. That would have been Dallas. funny, though, if he would have been like, oh, here, here's your Christmas gift. Here you go. I'm sure you've never seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> this That looks like the one we just shipped out three days ago. And so, but, uh, but yeah, so we have, we offer them in different species. So we make all of our products out of hardwoods. Okay. So the three main hardwoods we deal with is maple, cherry, and walnut. Those are all sourcely domesticated here in the United States. And then right. in some of the bottle openers and even some of the trays, we've experimented with exotics. Oh, nice. Exotics are woods that are imported from the other countries. Okay. The, uh, the two main regions that we primarily get some of our wood from are from Central Africa or like the yellow heart ones. And those would be sourced out of like South America. The right, tiger right. wood up in front. That one's out of South America, and the tiger wood there is actually from Central America. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and, yeah. and so and then we got things like leopard wood, yeah. wind gay, and even this purple heart, Beautiful. which doesn't really look purple, but... I'm sure we'll get a picture to make it look purple. Right. We'll not make it look purple, but we'll, we'll highlight it so that it looks purple. Yeah. <laughs> but tell me about, um, I know that you have a promotion going on as well, so let everybody know what you have going on so that they can take advantage of it. So we're going through a redesign phase where we're mm. redesigning some of our products. Gotcha. Um, the bottle openers, the trays, and the charcuterie boards are going to be the three products this season that we're re um, redesigning. Oh, okay. So we're going from this design where we have our stamp in the front and nothing in the back to more of this design. Um, gotcha. We've noticed based off feedback that this is more approachable to mm -hmm. people because they can see more of the bag. And then this also opens up an opportunity for us to sell these to retailers to kind of stamp their emblem. Yeah, or get or personalized by anybody yeah. who wants to buy them as well. Yeah, you can do initials or anything mm -hmm. like that. The uh, the trays and the charcuterie boards, we're going through more of a redesign. The trays are going to be bigger okay. or sturdier. Um, they're a little thinner. And then the charcuterie boards, we're going to experiment with different types of sizes and actually different types of shapes. Gotcha. And so from pretty much until we're, we sold out, they're going to be on sale for 20% off. And then from then, people are going to start noticing that the same item is on our website, but it's not really the same item. Right. It's going to be actually the new revamped design version of it. Perfect. Yeah. So then, Chris, tell me again where everybody can get your products from or reach out to you to make a custom design. 
So they can reach out to us on Instagram. We're very mm -hmm. active there. Um, if they don't have Instagram, you guys can also find us up on what, Facebook. Okay. Um, if not, we have a website, veteranzoneww.com. Mm -hmm. um, the WW stands for Woodworks. <laughs> and so, but, Good to know. Yeah, so if they're on Instagram, there's actually a link in our bio oh, where okay. they can take you directly to our website. Um, from there, they can give us an email or even send us a DM on either Facebook or Instagram or send us a personal email um, if they want any customized orders. Perfect, perfect. Um, well, I think that's all we have time for today, Chris. Thank you again for there, coming. There is one more thing. Uh-oh. We have one more thing. So, I lied. as an appreciation <laughs> for taking us on the show, we of made course. you guys a little gift. Oh, my gosh. I'm not good with opening gifts. I don't like it. But I'll do it today. I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. We have our own little board. So this is a, a maple tray. It is obviously one of our older designs, but um, our CNC, we went ahead and did your logo. Yes. Um, and so we, it came out really awesome. Beautiful. So you can go ahead and use this on your nightstand. You can put it by the front door, throw your wallet in it. Oh, yes. So. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Chris. And thank you, Haley, as well. She's here, too. Um, well, thank you. Thank you again, Chris. No problem. And thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you to all of our patrons out there today. And for continuing to support us in all, everything that we do. Um, if you're interested in becoming a patron, there is a link in the notes as well as in the bio on Instagram. So thank you, everybody. This is another episode of South by Southeast.